I want to ask you if my father, love you, is watching, love him to death, but like many, you know, some good people watch Fox News, and at this point, I mean, CNN, MSNBC is not exactly ac accuracy <laughs> either, but I, I always explain to him, like, Dad, we already live in a socialist country. Like, who do you think pays for, for the Trump's tax cuts? They're cutting heating for old people. They're cutting a lot of things for uh, low-income people. And I think more people, like Bernie, I, I remember there was a lot of Republicans at Trump rallies that liked Bernie. Mm -hmm. So how do, we how, do, how do we really understand and explain to uh, people that are just starting to get woke up, particularly there's a lot of Republicans that are more uh, progressive, they just don't know it, when we say, no, no, there is a class war, there is redistrib redistribution, it's just coming from you, the working man or woman, to the corporations and the powerful. Yes, absolutely. I mean, just to give a concrete example of what you're talking about, um, the Trump tax cuts that were passed in November 2017, they, they meant that the most profitable corporations got further tax cuts beyond the already um, cozy tax deals that they have had in the past. So Amazon, which doubled its profits from 5.6 billion to over $11 billion, and we're talking about profits, not revenues, which doubled its profits between 2017 and 2018, paid not a cent of taxes. And you should tell your dad, he paid more taxes <laughs> than Amazon has ever paid in its entire existence. And not only did the, the corporation not pay any taxes, they got a rebate, tax rebate of $129 million because of the Trump tax cuts, you know, putting so much uh, towards uh, tax cuts for the wealthy and big business. And so, uh, you know, if your dad has never gotten anything like that, a tax rebate of anything like that, then he should join the <laughs> socialist movement to change society because he's not the one uh, who is not one of the people benefiting from the way capitalism functions. And I think you uh, you hit upon a very important point, which is that uh, there are a lot of people who identify as rank and file Republican Party supporters who are actually very unhappy about the way this country has uh, functioned in many years and have the same kind of anger against corporate politicians that you and I do, even though we are on the left. And so it's really actually it's a it's a it's a reminder for those of us who are trying to build movements, social movements. It's a reminder for us that we cannot set up artificial boundaries against ordinary people who may join our movement if we made a good case to them. And that's why uh, it, it's it's critical that we make a distinction between ordinary people who identify as Republican and the power brokers at the top, which is the Republican politicians and big business themselves who may either support the democratic establishment or the Republican establishment. And a, a concrete example again is uh, what you were mentioning where, for example, West Virginia. West Virginia, every county went in majority numbers to Trump in the general election in 2016. But what was happening in the democratic primaries? Those same people were supporting Bernie in big numbers. And as a matter of fact, after the election, Bernie held uh, something called uh, uh, Bernie Sanders in Trump country kind of yeah. forum, public forum, mm -hmm. which was televised. And what did you see? You saw working class, low income, poor people, white people who were completely won over on the ideas of how this society is not functioning in our to our benefit, how we have suffered for generations. They were talking about intergenerational poverty. Intergenerational poverty affects white people, it affects black people. Of course, we have to have a, a complete understanding of racism and oppression that is real and we cannot just push it aside. We cannot say, oh, let's fight for socialism and racism will get cured. That is not the approach we would use as socialists. As socialists, what we recognize is oppression need, we need to fight oppression as much on the front lines as we fight against economic inequality, but with the understanding that in order to actually end oppression, end racism and sexism, we will need a different kind of system like socialism because capitalism has an interest in keeping these oppressions because it keeps all of us divided. But when we look at what circumstances people are living in, black people and brown people are disproportionately impacted by low wages, by poverty, by the lack of affordable housing, but a large proportion of white people are too. Mm -hmm. It is possible to build unified movements on the question of affordable housing, of 
uh, the $15 minimum wage of Medicare for all because everybody needs health care. It is possible to do that and it is possible to unite people on that basis and also unite them in a fight against racism. And I'd like to ask you, I'm not talking about predictions or anything, but I see these 2020 Democrat candidates and I see a lot of tinkering around the edges. You know, Senator Kamala Harris wants to give a tax, tax credit to families and uh, some people are talking about uh, Medicare or, or a public option and now other people are talking about autom automization and there, there's things around the edges but there's only one person, Bernie, really talking about the structural rigging of our economy. I call it the United Corporations of America. It's just a corporation. I mean, that's, that's what's happened. Uh, so at the federal level, uh, if you have all these candidates also really making it kind of like, oh, we just got to get, get Trump out. You know, there's this, there's this notion that everything was just dandy in America the day before Trump and it's all of a sudden fell off a cliff. So in terms of federal, uh, I know you're not a Democrat, but uh, what is the danger of this notion of we just got to blue no matter who, we just got to put somebody in there to get rid of Trump? Because I see if that happens with kind of the neoliberal, you know, Cory Booker type or this and that, we're, we're kind of just in a, the same place only with a nicer sounding president. Right. Uh, first of all, I completely uh, disagree with the people who say that everything was nice and dandy before Trump was elected. Certainly, we have to fully acknowledge the horror that uh, the Trump Trumpian ideas mm -hmm. represent, you know, the right, uh, right wing, white supremacist, bigoted ideas, uh, and also deeply anti-worker, anti-Muslim, anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans especially. So we absolutely uh, should have a full assessment of what Trump uh, represents and uh, why we don't want to go in that direction. But at the same time, if we, if, if our goal, let's, let's assume that we all have the goal of defeating Trump. I think we share that goal mm -hmm. with every Democrat. Mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe that even Nancy Pelosi wants to defeat Trump. I do, I do believe that. However, uh, what happened in 2016, if we don't, if they, if the Democratic Party doesn't learn the lessons from what happened in 2016, they still, one, they're out of touch with reality, and second, they show where they stand. I mean, where if, if, you, if you have a Democratic establishment that does not understand that the reason Hillary Clinton lost was because people are looking for an alternative to corporate politics. And if, if you don't have someone like Bernie Sanders who, uh, you know, actually is fighting, and as you said, is the only person in, in, in among the declared candidates who is fighting for ordinary working people, for Medicare for all, for a $15 minimum wage, against climate change, for a Green New Deal, uh, then what's, what's going to happen is that people, ordinary people are look, going to look for another pole of attraction and that is exactly what Trump did. Trump is a con man. You know, he does not represent the interests of ordinary working people. Mo many people actually are now much more aware of that than mm -hmm. before. But the reason he was able to win was because it was very easy for him to say, I'm an outsider, I'm not one of these rotten politicians. And how hard is it that to believe when you have Hillary Clinton as your opponent? Mm -hmm. But when you have Bernie Sanders, then immediately people understand that this is somebody who is fighting for us. But I think at the end of the day, uh, we, those of us who are trying to build the left, we cannot we cannot be in the business of uh, cheerleading the Democratic Party in any way. I mean, I, that's why I want to be very open about saying that we, uh, we uh, completely support the program, the platform that Bernie Sanders is running on. But as I had said before, and I had said this to him personally in, in actually at a forum in Manhattan the day before the People's March uh, on Climate Change, was that, uh, that the Democratic establishment, while it may want to defeat Trump, uh, it, it is absolutely um, antagonistic to the agenda of working class people. So they will want to defeat Bernie Sanders no matter what. And just like in 2016, uh, we should not be surprised if the Democratic establishment uses every dirty trick in the book to try and get Bernie out. And that is why I would say two things. One is I believe Bernie Sanders should run as an independent. And, if, and I know that he has decided to run as a Democrat. I think we should build serious movements in every neighborhood and every state around the program that he is fighting on. And, that, and, and if, he, if he doesn't make it through the primaries, we should urge him to run as an independent. But also we should remind ourselves that this is, 
this is not just about one candidate becoming president it's about the whole agenda of working class people and we need to build grassroots movements outside election years as well mm -hmm. I want to ask you straight up because I think it's not really brought, brought up this way. Uh, is Jeff Bezos and these people sociopaths? I think that the system of capitalism is no undoubtedly sociopathic because you all, all you have to do is look at the evidence, look at the mm -hmm. outcomes for most people. So it is a sociopathic system because it subjects, you know, basically billions of people in this world to utter misery while uh, a handful of people. Uh, make so much wealth that they don't know anything, they don't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and not to mention the absolute devastation and destruction of the planet. And that clock is ticking, uh, you know, furiously right now. We have very little time to actually reverse the course. And that's why it's so important that we uh, formulate the Green New Deal and fight for a Green New Deal for working people and move from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Uh, but while the system is sociopathic, Undoubtedly, the individuals who are the power brokers like Jeff Bezos, I think you have to, um, you know, either be consciously or unconsciously uh, willing to um, carry out sociopathic, uh, you know, steps mm -hmm. in order to actually deprive people of even, even their ordinary rights. So I think that the system is sociopathic, but it also relies on individual attributes. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statusquo.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statusquo.com/slash/join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.